Hi everyone, today we're going to look at freezing, melting, and boiling points, which are going to be those specific temperatures that some of our phase changes happen at. If you should need me, my email address is on the screen. It's rcrawford at jcpsmail.org. Let's hop right in. So the first thing I want us to do is just to take a quick glance at the two major temperature scales that you were going to find in use. Uh, on this side, we have what's called the Celsius temperature scale. Um, this is the temperature scale that is used by most of the world. Uh, it is almost exclusively used by scientists. Uh, in many ways, it is an easier scale to use. Okay. On this side, we have the Fahrenheit temperature scale. And uh, this is going to be uh, the temperature scale that is really only used in the United States. Uh, we, uh, it is not part of the metric system. Uh, we brought this temperature scale with us uh, when our ancestors came from England. So a few things that I want to point out. Um, when we look at a thermometer, uh, you know, we are just looking at a liquid that is uh, inside of a really tiny capillary tube. And as this liquid heats and cools, it expands and contracts which uh, essentially makes this uh, liquid move up and down, appear to move and up and down along this scale, okay? And so, you know, a thermometer is what we use to measure temperature. And really, temperature is just measuring the average motion of all the particles in something. All right. Um, this is, a, when I say that uh, Fahrenheit is only used in the U.S., you know, like I think 196 countries uh, in the world right now, and uh, we are, the United States is the only country really still using the Fahrenheit scale. And so, um, you know, there's uh, been a big push before to maybe attempt to use Celsius because it is easier to use, but that has been unsuccessful. But it's just us on this Fahrenheit scale. So you really have to, uh, by virtue, you need to learn two scales. All right. Um, when we look at, when we look at temperature and we think about phase changes, um, one of the things that I want you to keep in mind is there are some specific temperatures that really matter for each substance. Uh, so we're going to look really at water. And so some of you already know, and I'll start over here on Fahrenheit because some of you may be more familiar with the scale. Some of you already know that uh, we have to start looking out for snow and ice at 32 degrees. Okay, so that's because at 32 degrees, that is the, that is the temperature that water freezes at. Now, that is also the temperature that water melts at, but we'll come back to that here in just a moment. And so for water uh, on this scale, uh, it's going to be 32 degrees. Now, if we look on the Celsius scale, you know, it's, the same amount of, uh, it's the same amount of heat energy that we're measuring, but on this scale with these markings, uh, water is going to freeze at zero degrees Celsius. See why that's a little bit easier to remember? Now, the specific temperature that water is going to boil at on the Fahrenheit scale, that's going to be 212 degrees Fahrenheit. If we compare that to the Celsius scale, then we're going to find that that's going to be 100 degrees Celsius that water boils at. So really, um, when we look at both freezing and uh, melting points, these are just going to be specific temperatures uh, that we have uh, the change between a solid and a liquid. But when we look at boiling, and there's also something called condensation point, um, that's the specific temperature when we're moving between a liquid and a gas or a gas and a liquid. Okay, now it may seem a little strange to you that the melting and freezing point of water is exactly the same temperature. So how does that work? Well, it's really pretty simple. Um, which phase change is happening? When, and by that I mean either melting or freezing really depends on if the substance is losing heat or gaining heat. So let's suppose that the temperature of a substance is at, of water is at 32 degrees and it is gaining heat. If it's gaining, then that's going to be melting. Now, if it's at 32 degrees, if the water's at 32 degrees and it's losing heat, well, then the water itself is going to be freezing. Um, same, the same thing happens. So really, this gaining or losing of heat is whether which is what decides which phase change is going to be happening. Okay, but remember, these are just called. Um, freezing and melting points, okay? All right, now, uh, melting and boiling point, and none of, these, uh, none of these points really change. 
And this is a favorite question to ask on our science uh, EOG. And so for us to think about this a little deeper, I just want you to sort of picture one teaspoon, a small teaspoon of water versus five gallons of water. Now, um, I wanna say this again, melting and boiling point of substance do not change. Uh, water is always going to melt, or ice is always going to melt at 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius. Uh, water is always going to boil at 212 degrees Fahrenheit or 100 degrees Celsius. That is always going to be the, the specific temperature that that happens at. Um, now, let's go ahead and compare this small teaspoon of water to five gallons and see what we can learn here. Um, now, here's the part that I think confuses students. Um, it is clearly going to take more heat energy. Uh, we're going to have to put more uh, heat into five gallons of water, and that's going to take a lot longer time to get it up to, let's suppose we're boiling it, up to 212 degrees. So this is going to take a long time. But just because it takes a long time to add that much heat to the water does not mean that we have changed the boiling point. Uh, if we look at the teaspoon, on the other hand, you know, it's going to be fairly easy to add enough heat energy to get this teaspoon of water up to 212 degrees or 100 degrees Celsius. So really the thing that changes is the amount of heat energy and the amount of time that it takes to get that energy into the water to get it to that boiling point, okay? But the boiling point itself stays the same. It's always gonna be 212 degrees Fahrenheit. It's always going to be 100 degrees Celsius. Remember, the amount of the matter does not change. Last thing that I wanna leave you with is this idea because we've only looked at water, um, that uh, boiling point and melting point and freezing point and condensation point, um, these are specific to the substance. So, and, and I think this is something that you would know if you were to really think about it. And this is given, of course, in degrees Celsius. And here we have water, which we've been talking about at 100 and zero. But we can see that um, different substances um, have different melting and um, boiling points. So like, for example, let's take a look at copper. Um, copper, its melting point, copper is gonna melt at over a thousand degrees Celsius. Um, and this may be strange to you to think that you can vaporize co copper into a gas, but copper, in, like all, sub, all, all pure substances, um, can also be vaporized, and that's gonna be at over 2,000 degrees, 2,562 degrees Celsius. Copper is always going to vaporize and turn into a gas at that point. Copper is always going to melt from a solid to a liquid at 1,085 degrees. These numbers do not change, and these numbers exist for all pure substances. In some ways, we can use these, uh, these temperatures to identify a substance if we don't know what it is, just by trying to melt it and measuring the temperature that it melts at. Now, um, I do want to point out that um, these, different, these different temperatures for uh, melting and boiling, well, this comes back down to IMF again. So the stronger that the force is between the particles that make up a substance, the higher that temperature is gonna be. So if we look on this scale, we, look, we can see here that tungsten doesn't melt until, it doesn't melt until over uh, 3,400 degrees Celsius. So that means that the particles, uh, the atoms in tungsten are really, really attracted to each other. They have a lot of IMF. They are really holding on to each other. So as a result, it's gonna take a lot, heat, a lot of heat energy to weaken those bonds. Um, and so when we look at melting point, we're also looking at the strength of the uh, intermolecular force between the bonds. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for today. Um, thing to remember, I need you to be able to like understand those specific melting and freezing and boiling and condensation points for water. And remember, these are properties that do not change, right? All right, have a great day.